Hello everybody, welcome to the channel, Tech Guy Charlie here. So today we are going to upgrade this HP Pavilion gaming laptop and I will show you how to open up the rear panel to get to the internals and we will also go through the upgrades that I recommend for this particular model. By the way, this is the HP Pavilion Gaming 15 EC 2076AX. This one is powered by an AMD Ryzen 7 5800H and an RTX 3050. You can also watch this video if you've got the Intel model because the RAM and the SSDs are the same. So with that out of the way, let's get started. Alright, so first off, to get the rear cover off, you will need to unscrew 7 Phillips head screws. Then you might need to wedge something like a guitar pick between the rear panel and the body. And be very careful while doing this, don't use a flat head screwdriver, you can easily damage something inside. So do as I say, not as I do. And very carefully, pop the tabs that hold the back panel in place, then gently pry the back panel off. And that will give you full access to the internals of the laptop. Okay, our first upgrade will be the RAM. It is located underneath this black tape. So you will need to carefully peel this off. And this particular laptop comes with two sticks of 8GB each that makes a total of 16GB of RAM, which is more than enough for gaming. But if you want to edit large 4K videos, then I would recommend 32 gigs because 16 gigabytes of RAM is not enough. You only get 15 gigs because one gigabyte is reserved for the internal Radeon GPU. And this particular model supports DDR4 3200MHz memory. And you can check what memory your laptop has got using CPU-Z. I'll put a link to this software in the video's description. Also, picking the right kind of memory can be very tricky. It's not as easy as just grabbing the rated speed memory and the size for your laptop. Nowadays, you also gotta take a look at the memory ranks. So for 16GB sticks, I would recommend going with dual rank, which is also known as 2R into 8 type of memory. These RAM sticks have 8 DRAM chips on each side, making it a total of 16 DRAM chips on a single SODIMM. So I would recommend Kingston Fury RAM. So each of these are 16GB, 3200MHz, CL20, dual rank SODIMMs. And these are perfect if you want to upgrade your laptop's memory to 32 gigs. I will put the link in the video's description if you want this exact same memory. Also, please keep in mind that you also get these 16GB RAM sticks in 1 into 16R configuration. That is single rank with the exact same specs. So it will be 16 gigs DDR4 3200 MHz, but single rank configuration RAM sticks are slower. You will experience about a 20% performance drop using a single rank 16GB DDR4 RAM stick. Linus explained why this happens, so I suggest that you go watch his video once you are done with mine. Okay, so our RAM sticks are now installed. We can now proceed to part number two, which is the storage upgrade. When it comes to upgrading the storage, you get plenty of options to choose from. So this particular model comes with a 500GB NVMe drive which is underneath this metal heatsink. Additionally, you also get an empty 2.5 inch SATA slot for a hard drive or an SSD. So here you get two options. Option number one, you can choose to upgrade the existing 500GB NVMe drive to a 1TB or even a 2TB NVMe. If you do so, I would recommend going with a high performance NVMe like this Western Digital Black SN750SE. So this one is a 1TB Gen 4 NVMe drive. It's not super expensive and performs reasonably well. I think it's slightly better than the existing Micron NVMe drive that's already in there. You also gotta keep in mind that this is our boot drive. So if you do upgrade the NVMe drive, then you will have to clone the original NVMe onto the new one or do a clean install of Windows 11. Oh, and by the way, I already have a tutorial on how to clone an NVMe to another NVMe. The card should pop up right now. So it is a little cumbersome and you will have to spend some extra money to get an enclosure. And you kind of only gain additional 500 gigs. So this is why I recommend leaving the original 500GB NVMe in place. Instead, pick the option number 2 that is to install a 1TB 2.5 inch SATA SSD as a secondary storage drive for your games and your documents. And if you plan on doing this, I would recommend a low power cost effective SSD. WD Green fits my budget and it is super cheap costing only $82. This SSD is a crazy bang for buck and it's even got 3 years warranty. 
Now that said, I would never recommend these WD Green drives as a boot drive because they are slow and have low TBW endurance. But as a secondary storage drive for games and other stuff, these are perfect. Now installing the 2.5 inch drive is super easy. First unscrew the three Phillips head screws holding the caddy in place. Then carefully remove the caddy and unplug the SATA connector from the dummy hard drive. There are four screws that hold the dummy drive in place. Unscrew them and remove the dummy drive. Then just insert the new SSD and keep in mind it goes in upside down. Then reinstall the four screws. Plug in the SATA connector and reinstall the caddy with the hard drive in place. Then reinstall the three screws that hold the caddy in place. And that's it. We now have a 1TB SATA SSD in place. So that's it. All of our upgrades are now complete. Unfortunately, you cannot upgrade the CPU or the GPU. Those are soldered onto the motherboard. And before we close the laptop, I'm just gonna reinstall this thing. I'm not sure why it was there in the first place, but yeah, let's just reinstall this thing. And there you go. Now, before we put these screws back in, I wanna start the laptop up and see if it detects the new RAM and the new hard drive. So let's do that first. Okay, so moment of truth. Let's see if the laptop boots into Windows. We've got keyboard light, screen is also on, So there you go, we are now in Windows. That shows you the RAM is working fine. Okay, so we've got CPU-Z running over here and if we click on SPD, you can see it's a dual rank memory and it's running in dual channel, 32 gigabytes and it's a CL20 RAM stick. By the way, the Samsung memory that came from the factory had a latency of CL22. So the new one is a little faster. And if we open up Task Manager, you can see we've got a total of 32 gigs, so that's nice. Now, as for the hard drive, it doesn't really show up over here. That's because we need to initialize the hard drive first before we can use it. So right click on the start button and open up disk management. And you will automatically get this prompt that asks you to initialize the disk. So we will initialize in GPT, okay. So now our disk has been initialized, but to use the hard drive, we need to partition it. So right click and select new simple volume. Click on next, next, D is fine. Click on next. If you want, you can give it a name, but I will leave this blank. Quick format is fine. Next, next. And there you go. Our new SSD is ready to use. Barely takes about two seconds to format. And if we open this PC, there's our brand new hard drive. Now I know some of you guys might want to see the crystal disk mark results on our new WD green drive. So here are the results again, not the best, but still it will outperform a traditional mechanical hard drive. And if you compare the speeds with the factory installed NVMe, you'll see that there is a massive difference between the two. So that Micron NVMe drive is actually a fairly good performer, about the same as the WD black NVMe that I showed you. So what else is user upgradable on this laptop? Well, for starters, you can upgrade the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth card, which is right over here, but no need to upgrade right now because that's already a Wi-Fi 6 and a Bluetooth 5.2 card. You can also replace the battery by yourself. You can buy a new battery online. There are four screws holding the battery in place. That's the battery connector. You can take it out and replace it with a new one. And lastly, the fans are also easily removable and you can clean them by yourself. There are three screws that hold the fan in place. Take off these screws, unplug the connector, which is over here, remove the fan, clean it and reinstall it. So I would say overall, this laptop is quite user serviceable. So now finally, we can reinstall the back cover and install all of these screws. All right, guys, our upgrades have been successful. We now have 1.5 terabytes of storage and 32 gigabytes of RAM on our HP Pavilion gaming laptop. So these are fairly decent specifications. All right, so thank you for watching this video. And if you have found this video to be helpful, make sure to press the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos. All right, so thank you for watching and I will see you guys in another video.